So I just got done with about um, half of this video Paul Vanderclay did with Andrew Sweeney. And I thought I'd just have to make a response video about uh, the Jordan Peterson God question that came up in the first half. Um, it's like the most famous thing, Jordan, next to the pronoun issue. I think in Christian circles, people want to know, does he believe or doesn't he believe in God? And so Paul and Andrew talked a little bit about that, and I thought it was an interesting conversation, and they gave uh, a couple of different possibilities as to why he answers the question the way he does. Uh, but I think in my own research, which of course everyone does their own way of researching into things, and I was interested in looking up what influenced uh, Jordan, and one of the ways I did that was by flipping through the notes section of Maps of Meaning, and I noticed a lot of Northrop Fry citations. So I started reading uh, some of Fry's work, and I started with Fearful Symmetry, which was his first book about William Blake, and then The Great Code, The Bible is Literature. And I think there's a quote from The Great Code that really sheds a lot of light on why Jordan is talking about the God question the way he does. And um, let's see if I click on this. Well, okay, it brings it right up. And I'm just going to read the passage, and hopefully you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, there's a little bit of language you might not understand here, and it's because Fry cites the work of Giambattista Vico. Um, I think it was the book, uh, The New Science, that Vico published in 1725, I think. And it didn't get much acclaim while he was alive, but Fry seems to put a lot of uh, weight in his theory of a sort of cyclical history. And each, there's sort of like three phases of history, and each phase has a language, a type of language associated with it. The first phase is, I think, the poetic, the poetic age, or the, the age of gods, and it has poetic language. Uh, the second has a noble language, which is controlled by the aristocrats. And the third age is more of the age, is the vulgar language, I think. It's associated with the people. It's very um, commonly, the common understanding, concrete, objectified instead of personified. And I go over a lot of the details regarding that in this other video I did called The Missing Link. Uh, but I just want to try to you know, that missing link video is like 41 minutes, and I wanted to capture the essence of the Jordan Peterson God question in a much shorter uh, time frame. So with that knowledge of the three phases of language, I'm going to read this quote here, which I think will shed a lot of light on why Jordan answers that question the way he does. So Fry goes on to say, In the 19th century, there were many thinkers, mainly of the idealistic school, who adhered to the metonymic tradition with its god. But some, even of them, give an impression of having said to themselves, here's this word God, what am I to do with it? What they did was often ingenious, but frequently confirmed the feeling that the conception of God, like the biblical metaphors in metonymic theology, were becoming, however unconsciously, a cumbersome piece of traditional baggage. In a conception of language where no premises are beyond scrutiny, there is nothing to stop anyone from returning to square one, and the question, is there a God? What is significant about this is that the answer, if it is to remain within the framework of third phase language, can only be no, because any question beginning with is there is, so to speak, already an ungodly question, and, quote, a God is for all practical purposes no God. And I just want to emphasize the third phase language part. So, Jordan is trying to remain in the third phase of language, which is the age we're in, and it's particularly the age of scientific discourse. It's what Sam Harris and Matt Dillahunty are trying to use when communicating with Jordan and others. But Jordan is sort of, Jordan in his study of myth is also using the poetic language of myth, and he sees value in that. And so when they ask him, in a third phase language type of way, is there a God? Like pointing, show me, where's the God? How much does he weigh? What's his height and weight? You know, so forth. That's not really a question about God. And so Jordan has expressed trouble with that use of language and trying to answer that question. So 
anyway, I'll just, I'll, I'll go on from here. There's a little bit about Nietzsche that's kind of it's interesting, so I'll read that too. Nietzsche's formula, God is dead, despite the amount of attention it has attracted, was incidental to his more important aim of de-deifying the natural environment, and in particular of removing the metaphor of law from ordinary consciousness to describe the operations of nature. There are no laws in nature, Nietzsche says, only necessities, but the metaphor law of nature carries with it a vestigial sense of a personality who commands, and other personalities ourselves. Who have the option of obeying or disobeying and you have to remember that the proto-scientists like Copernicus and Galileo and even Newton they were in a Christian society they they had these beliefs were deeply seated in the, the way they thought and really it's in their language which informed the way they thought that's why Jordan just you know the first thing that made him famous really was his uh, dispute about the pronouns dispute about language and how that could then enter into forming the way we think. And so Nietzsche likewise says, he's, he's, he's drawing the same attention to the language that's used in science and telling you that that's also informing the way you're thinking about the world uh, of science. Uh, Nietzsche's right. If you're going to be an atheistic scientist, you can't really talk about laws of, of science. This is also interesting, this paragraph. He talks about different uh, notable people in history like Machiavelli, Rousseau, Marx, Freud, and so forth, um, and how they existed in their phases of language. Um, but I'm going to skip over to this paragraph that more directly is concerning Jordan and the God question. What I am concerned with at present is not the question whether God is dead or, absol or obsolete, but with the question of what resources of language may be dead or obsolete. And that's the key right there. The metaphorical and metonymic phases of language have been in large measure outgrown because of the obvious limitations that they imposed on the human mind. But it seems clear that the descriptive phase also has limitations in a world where its distinction of subject and object so often does not work. And I think it's important to note here that in uh, Jordan's discussion at the Ayn Rand Institute, he said he cannot help but use theological religious language when talking with his patients and, and trying to, uh, to, to heal them. Uh, so he, he's very aware of the limitations of third phase language and he has to dip back into a more primitive language uh, that's poetic and mythological and religious. There is no question of giving up descriptive language, only of relating it to a broader spectrum of verbal expression. Again, I would I'll come back to this in a couple of slides. The word God is a noun, and so falls into the category of things and objects. For metonymic writing, this is not an insuperable problem. What is beyond all things and objects can still be a noun, or at any rate have a name. For most writers of the second phase, God represents an immutable being, set over against the dissolving flow of the world of becoming in which we are. You can get a sense of Heidegger there. And practically the only grammatical device for conveying the sense of the immutable is the abstract noun. For third phase writing, founded as it is on a sense apprehended distinction between objects that are there and objects that are not, and I go into this in the missing link video, God can only go, God can go only into the illusory class. But perhaps this kind of noun thinking is, at least here, a fallacy of the type that Whitehead calls a fallacy of misplaced concreteness. In Exodus 3.14, God, though God also gives himself a name, he defines himself as I am that I am, which scholars say is more accurately rendered, I will be what I will be. That is, we might come closer to what is meant in the Bible by the word God if we understood it as a verb and not a verb of simple asserted existence, as Sam Harris wants, but a verb implying a process accomplishing itself. This is perhaps more closely resembling what Jordan is thinking. This would, this would involve trying to think our way back to a conception of language in which words were words of power, conveying primarily the sense of forces and energies rather than analogs of physical bodies. To some extent, this would be a reversion to the metaphorical language of primitive communities as our earlier references to a cycle of language and the primitive word manna suggested, but it would also be oddly contemporary with post-Einsteinian physics, where atoms and electrons are no longer thought of as things, 
but rather as traces of processes. God may have lost his function as the subject or object of a predicate, but may not be so much dead as entombed in a dead language. I say right there, that's, that's exactly what's happening uh, with Jordan and Sam Harris, I think. And I haven't listened to those discussions yet, um, but from their previous discussions, it's all about language and, and you know, how they view truth. What does truth mean? Obviously, in philosophy, words, the, the specific meaning of words is, is, is very important. So what I would say is Jordan is a both and, <clears throat> both and kind of thinker where he's taking religion, both religion and science, and using the best of both of both things. Whereas Sam Harris is more of an either-or thinker, uh, binary in his options. It's either religion or science. We can't have both. In fact, we have to get rid of the religion in order to further the scientific thinking, I think, is, is what he's saying. I also think that's why Jordan is so popular, because he's able to bridge the gap between both worlds. So Jordan is uh, straddling the fence not of belief or disbelief, but rather of the first, second, and third phase phases of language, as described by Fry, who, who I said cited Vico for this theory. As is often the case with philosophy, the words you use must have precise meanings. The meaning of God in common third phase understanding is not what Jordan Peterson is talking about. It, it can't be what he's talking about. And that's what's confusing to most people. That has to be explained to, to people unfamiliar with such distinctions and layers of thought. I think Jordan could do a better job of explaining this by citing the work of Fry and Vico directly so people have something to refer to. Because I just stumbled upon this in, in my own research, really. So uh, if you found this at all helpful, uh, please uh, subscribe. Thank you.